this video I'll be working through the level 2 2019 mechanics exam question 1. Right, Nicole is playing hockey for a school team. During the game, she passes the ball to a teammate, Josie, um, who is the same distance or who is some distance away. To do this, she has to raise the ball high enough to give it a flight and low enough to keep it safe. She hits the ball with a velocity of 22 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal, I'm guessing. Show that the initial vertical velocity of the ball is 11 meters per second. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna chuck in the rest of our triangle. This is the vertical component, so VV, and this is the horizontal component. Um, this is the opposite. That's the hypotenuse, that's the adjacent. We're trying to find the opposite, we're trying to find the vertical component. We've got the hypotenuse, that's 22 meters per second. So OH, that's sine, so we say sine, theta, is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Rearrange for the opposite, so H sine theta is equal to the opposite. In other words, 22 sine, what is it? Uh, 30 equals, equals exactly 11. Right, 11 meters per second. But, um, describe and explain the motion of the ball. You should prefer to any forces acting on it as it, is, as it moves through the air. You may include a diagram to support your answer. So, just reading through here, like up there, there's nothing about friction that I've come across yet. But there's nothing to say to ignore friction. Um, man, this is a stupid question. Right, <laughs> so the way I'm gonna answer it is I'm gonna first off, I'll draw a free body diagram. So here's my ball, hope we can see that, and I'm gonna call this ball, and we're gonna have from the center of mass, going down, I should use a ruler, but I should, wow, too bad. Um, this is Fg, and I'll put a key over here. Fg equals force of gravity, or the weight force, um, either way. Um, and that's really it. That, that, we're gonna ignore friction. Um, so what I'll do is I'll pause, write full answer, and then explain exactly. Right, so I've said, Ignoring friction, the only forces acting on the ball is gravity downwards. The horizontal velocity remains constant as there are no horizontal forces. The vertical velocity decreases until peak height. I probably should have put until it reaches the top, but whatever um, is reached, then decreases, then increases downwards. Um, obviously, because it's accelerating downwards, and I put the motion is parabolic, is is in a parabolic shape, and I've chucked in my parabola. This is kind of confusing, because maybe you could talk about air resistance, because it hasn't specifically said you haven't. If that was the case, at any point in time, air resistance would always <clears throat> be the opposite direction to the net velocity. So at the top, there's only horizontal velocity, so the air resistance would be horizontally, uh, like the air resistance force would point backwards, because the velocity is forwards, um, which makes the shape of the whole, um, like, parabola, it makes it almost like, a, I don't know what you call it, um, it's like a funny parabola, I can't remember the name of it, um, but it looks like this, it would look ooh, like that, that's massive over exaggeration, because what happens is the horizontal velocity just decreases and decreases and decreases, um, not so much the vertical velocity, a um, little bit, but not really, so you end up with a large front side and then a smaller back side, anyway, that's completely irrelevant you'll never have to deal with that level two. Right, Josie shoots a goal, ball hits the back of the net with horizontal speed of 22 meters per second. The impact makes the net stretch by 15 centimeters. The ball has a mass of 160 grams. By considering the transfer of energy of, from the ball to the net, calculate the spring constant of the net. Um, so that is just gonna be, you've got kinetic energy and it's going to spring, con, uh, spring energy. So you're gonna have E, K is gonna be equal to E, P, um, spring, right, and then that is basically equal to half mv squared is then equal to half kx squared. Um, notice you don't have the negative there because there's no such thing as negative energy. Right, we totally need to times both sides by two, so we're going to end up with uh, mv squared equals kx squared. And then we're going to divide by x squared because I'm trying to find the spring constant. So mv squared over x squared equals k. 
Look at that, and that is going to be equal to what's the mass? 0 0.16 kilograms times 22 squared divided by how far does it go? 0 0.15 squared because it's 15 centimeters. It needs to, everything needs to be in SI units, so meters, and that needs to be in kilograms. Right. You can see I just calculated that there. Gives me 3,441.77. And down the bottom I put the actual answer. K equals, or oh, I should really go to two SF, but level two is real inconsistent about that. So I'm just gonna give it in th four SF. Three, four, four, uh, three, two. Um, and then spring constant is, what the heck is spring constant? Newtons per meter. Newtons per meter. Because in your formula sheet, you'll see that F is equal to Kx. Um, if you go F divided by X, it gives you K. Um, and that's force divided by distance gives you the spring constant units. Um, there we go. Should be careful right away. Um, Josie was 44 meters away from Nicole. Nicole, when Nicole passed the ball to Josie in parts A and B, will the be, uh, ball reach Josie before it bounces? Justify your answer using appropriate calculations. This is a range question. Um, so the first thing you do for a range question is you find out how long the ball is in flight for. Um, and to do that there, we just find out how long it takes for the ball to get to the top of the flight, and then we double it because assuming air resistance doesn't exist, which in level two it doesn't. Um, Yep, so we have our initial velocity, and I'll just, I'm not gonna put vertical, but I'm just say it's vertical, so I can, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, uh, what VF, I should say, VF equals VI plus AT. It's in your formula sheet, it's in the kinematic equation part of it. Um, we know our initial vertical velocity is 11 meters per second, we calculated that. And we're trying to find out time. So we're gonna rearrange this here for time, so we're gonna have VF, it's positive VI on this side, so it's gonna be minus the initial velocity divided by the acceleration, because that means I'd be left with AT. That is equal to the time, and that is equal to, at the top of the flight, it's not moving, so zero. This is the vertical component, not the horizontal component. Minus, what was the initial speed? 11 meters per second divided by 9.8, and that'll give me 1.1, Two, two, four. I'm not gonna round, I'm a four decimal places is all right, and I forgot to put negative 9.8 because gravity's acting downwards, the initial velocity was upwards, they're both vectors. Yeah, I'm usually real lazy about that for these videos, but I should probably not do that very much. So, time in flight, time in flight, oops, GHT, is two times 1.224, you get the drift, and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort of double that times by two, 2.24. seconds. And this should really be in seconds as well, because it's just whatever. Um, so the range, the range, range um, is basically the distance. So it's distance equals velocity times, and it's horizontal velocity times time in the flight. So that is gonna be equal to the horizontal, so I need to figure out what the horizontal velocity is, and just over the page we can see that we have the hypotenuse, and we're trying to find out the horizontal component, which is the adjacent, so we're gonna use H and an A, and you can see from here it ends up being H sine theta opposite, it just ends up being H cos theta adjacent, is equal to the adjacent. I don't know if I'll, well, maybe I'll do it down here, because cos theta is equal to the adjacent, adjacent over the hypotenuse, there should be an A. Um, remember the hypotenuse up there, it means that A is equal to H cos theta. So that is gonna be equal to 22 cos 30 degrees times the time, which is 2.44, um, all the rest, because I'm just gonna save up my calculator, that is gonna be equal to. And that equals 42.77, 40, meters. Um, notice I just went 22 cos times and I just went shift answer just to use the previous answer which was 2.24 yada 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 and now you need to answer the actual question so will it re will the ball reach Josie before it bounces? She's 44 meters away. Uh, no which is actually really surprising because this is like the first time it's ever in any of these exams that it's come short so to like hands off to other than the, like the question B which was pretty rubbish. Um, they should have said ignore friction, but whatever. Um, so 
no, the ball won't uh, reach Josie. As it only travels, travels 42.77 meters, not 44 meters. Pretty sure if you if you don't have this part here, you only get merit. Just saying, like answering it gives you the excellence, um, which is hilarious. But anyway.